Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Father Dennis Billy. It's a great joy for me, an honor and a privilege to be able to come here to Phoenix, Arizona to talk to you about my love for Mary, especially under the title of our Mother of Perpetual Health. Redemptorists have a special devotion to Mary under this title, and as a matter of fact, we're celebrating a jubilee year this year because it marks the 150th anniversary of the gift of the icon of our Mother of Perpetual Health to the Redemptorists when Pope P Pius the, the IX asked us to spread devotion to her throughout the entire world. And we sometimes like to say, it's one of the few things we've ever done well. <laughs> the original icon of Mary under this title of our Mother of Perpetual Health is in the Church of St. Alfonso on Via Mariolana in Rome, not far from the Basilica of St. Mary Majors. It's where our general house is. And I lived there for 20 years, and I celebrated many, many masses right beneath the icon of our Mother of Perpetual Health. Mary, our mother, has many titles. She is the queen of heaven. She is the queen of peace. She is the queen of the most holy rosary. She is the mother of God. She is the mother of the church. She is your mother. She is my mother. She is our mother of perpetual health. I'd like to tell you why we call her our Mother of Perpetual Health. Probably the one moment in her life when she felt most helpless, when she felt most unable to do what she really wanted to do, was when she stood at the foot of the cross and watched her son die. You can imagine no parent wants to see their child die. And to see her son die in such a terrible, horrible way must have been a very deep pain for her. And another title that Mary has is the mother of sorrows. Mary is both queen and mother, but as the little flower, St. Teresa of Lisieux said, she is queen and mother, but she is more mother than queen. And the good news is that the story does not end at the cross, because Jesus rose from the dead. St. Paul says, if Christ is not risen, then our faith is in vain. And Mary is the one person who experiences the fullness of redemption because she has been assumed body, soul, mind, and spirit into heaven. And she sits at Jesus' right hand, and he reigns as king of heaven, and she reigns as queen of heaven but she exercises her queenly power as a mother because she is both queen and mother, but she is more mother than queen. And everything that she could not do at the foot of the cross for the body of her son, she now does from her vantage point in heaven as she sits at his son's, her son's right hand, she does for the body 
of the church. Because we, those who believe in Jesus, those who seek to do good in their lives, we who follow our consciences, we who seek to build the kingdom of good and of God in our midst are members of Christ's body. And Mary is a powerful intercessor. Mary is our mother. And she knows each one of us by name. You know, Pope Francis recently said that the Christian, the Christian without Mary is an orphan. The Christian without Mary is an orphan. And I also heard somewhere, not from Pope Francis, but somewhere else, someone once said, it is possible to be homeless in your own home. You can have all the trappings of life. You can have the, the nicest house, the most money, the nicest car, but not have any love, not have that, that sense of warmth that makes a home. Well, my brothers and sisters, Jesus gave us his mother as he hung dying from the cross, looking down at her when he said to the disciple that he loved, here is your mother. He gave us his mother, his last gift to us, because he wanted us to feel at home. He wanted to give us this sense of, of warmth, of motherly affection, the same sense of motherly affection that he himself experienced as he grew up in his home in Nazareth. I ask you now, all of you here, take a deep breath. Let it out. Let it out. Pope St. John Paul II once said that the church breathes on two lungs the lung of Christianity from the East and the lung of Christianity from the West. Well, the Holy Rosary, which we are going to pray in a few minutes, is a great instrument of prayer that comes from the West. And the icon of our Mother of Perpetual Health is a great instrument of prayer which comes from the East. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the story in this icon. See, both the rosary and the icon tell the story of Christ in a slightly different way. In the icon, it invites us to use our imagination and to think of Jesus when he was a little child. And we know that Jesus was like us in all things but sin. And when he was a little child, he had a premonition or a vision of his death. And it filled him with fear. It's not a, it's not a sin to be afraid. It filled him with fear and he ran to his mother's arms. And you may look at this icon and say, well, it doesn't, it, it, it's not very realistic. It doesn't seem very three-dimensional. Well, in Eastern art, they, they, they smash symbols and images together to give you a sense of a different dimension. An icon is meant to be a window looking through, piercing through that window so you look at the Blessed Mother and her son, and Mary, your mother, and the mother of Jesus, looks back at you. Well, Jesus is so afraid, and you have to picture these, this in a, in a kind of a three-dimensional way. These angels are flying around him, and his neck is moving left and right. He's scared. 
And Mary holds him in his arms and she looks down at him. But then you see the crease in her neck and she see that she's turning out and she's looking at you. And whenever you look at that icon, no matter where you are in a room, Mary is looking at you because she wishes to help you from her place in heaven because she is more mother than queen. The one thing that Mary wants to do, there's only really one thing that she wants to do, and it's bring you closer to her son. She made Jesus' story her own story. And what is that story? Well, Jesus entered our world and became one of us. He gave himself to us completely to the point of dying for us on the cross. He became a source of nourishment for us in the Eucharist and a source of hope for us in the resurrection. Mary made that story her own and that is the story that we meditate upon when we pray the rosary. In the glorious mysteries, we pray about the mystery of the incarnation when Jesus entered our world. In the sorrowful mysteries, we meditate upon the mysteries of his passion and death. In the mysteries of light, we meditate upon his ministry on earth, with, which culminates in the mystery of the Eucharist. And in the glorious mysteries, we meditate upon the resurrection of Jesus and the hope that we all share in Mary in her assumption into heaven because we hope one day that our own bodies will be raised from the dead and share in the mystical communion of the Holy Trinity. And my brothers and sisters, this same story which Mary made her own and which we seek to make our own when we pray the Holy Rosary is also present in the icon of our Mother of Perpetual Health. After all, it's Jesus as a little child. Think about that. Jesus as a little child afraid in his mother's arms. God could have chosen to save us in any number of ways, but God chose to save us by becoming one of us. And he appeared on this earth not as a full-grown man, but he came to us as the most helpless of all children, born into poverty. And we too are called to turn to our mother in, with all of our needs. We see the angels flying around him, carrying the instruments of the passion. And Jesus has a premonition of what's going to happen to him. And each of us, each of us sense that one day, one day, we don't know when it's going to be, but one day we are going to die. And the resurrection is represented in the gold background of the icon, which permeates Jesus and comes through the body of Mary herself. This is the idea that, that God is not satisfied in simply allowing us in our human to remain in our human frailty and weakness, but he actually promises to heal us and also divinize us make us like him. God became human. God became man so that man might become divine. And you may ask, well, where's the Eucharist in, in this picture? Where's the Eucharist in this icon? Well, if you know anything about the way the Eastern liturgy is celebrated, the Byzantine liturgy, they have a wall, it's called an iconostasis of icons that separate the believing community from the mysteries of the Eucharist which take place in the sanctuary. It's filled with saints, 
especially Mary and Joseph, the angels, and many, many others. And they are there to remind us that we belong to the communion of saints, and that that icon representation is there to remind us that we are not only part of the communion of saints, that we peer through them as through a window into the mystery of the messianic banquet, which the Eucharist is. My brothers and sisters, Mary is our queen. Mary is our mother. Mary has many titles. And one of the reasons why we give her so many titles, number one, because of her special place in the role of redemption, words are not enough. We have to pile them on one after another. And so she is not only Holy Mary, Mother of God, but she is also Immaculate Conception, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of Chestahova. She is the Tower of David, the Tower of Ivory, the Tower of Gold, the Ark of the Covenant. She's all these things and so many more. But in addition to that, the reason why we give Mary so many titles is because the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church is the Church universal. The Church means it embraces all people. It embraces all, all ethnic backgrounds. It embraces all languages. And for that very, very reason, we celebrate Mary under all of these different titles because each nationality, each ethnic group has their own special devotion to Mary. And yet, for all of us, for all of us, she is our mother of perpetual help. When Jesus was afraid, he went to his mother Mary. A wise man once told me, think of your deepest fear. What is the worst possible thing that could ever happen to you? And then he said, you know, it may very well come about came about for Jesus. But then he went on to say, but it's okay, because Jesus has conquered death, and Mary, his mother, our mother, is with him at his right hand. Whatever your fears are, whatever your needs are, wherever you are, bring them to Mary because Mary loves you and she only wants to bring you to her son. She is the queen of heaven. She is our mother of perpetual help. She is more mother than queen and she will never take her eye off of you. May God bless us. <laughs>